Hi, my name is Rust. I'm a Soulsborne content creator with an emphasis on PvP. For the last few months, I've been unable to upload any content as I've been spending my time shoveling as much biochemistry in my two brain cells as they could take. And surprise, they didn't take it very well. But after months of crippling depression, anxiety, and nightmares about predicting the outcomes of oxidation reactions, I'm finally able to dedicate some time to teaching you all the hidden mechanics of Elden Ring that the Giga Chad PvP sweat lords like myself don't want you to know. So, in this video, I'm going to teach- Oh yeah, name this molecule. I'm sorry, what? Name this biomolecule or you fail the exam! 3-ethyl-5-isopropyl benzoic acid now reacted to 4-isopropyl and methylenoline. What product do you get? I, I don't know! I don't know isn't an answer! You fail! You fail! You f- I'm fine. Really. The other classes were easy. I have a bone to pick with the anatomy professor. But in medical anthropology, I spent more time learning about the mating habits of weird birds than I did anything else. I tried incorporating some of these principles into real life application by performing the sort of dance that I learned through playing Elden Ring, and it proved rather successful, as the girl that I was demonstrating threw an alcoholic beverage in my face. I always thought it was the female that was supposed to be the one getting wet, but I probably just misunderstood the textbook. Either way, I'd call this a resounding success. But you're here to learn about Elden Ring mechanics, not listen to me trauma dump. Jump attacks are a very complicated game mechanic with a lot of hidden nuances to them that make them downright broken. Sometimes. These hidden mechanics aren't explained anywhere in the game, and even if you've spent thousands of hours playing the game, then you probably don't fully understand them. There's four concepts that I'll be covering in this video. The three phases and two types of the jump animation, jump animation hitboxes, jump attack super armor, and infinite poise events. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you found this information helpful at all, or if you're just more confused than ever. The jump animation can be broken down into a few different parts. There's three separate phases to any jump, being the jump phase, landing phase, and the grounded phase. The transition to the landing phase is just past the apex of the jump as the character begins to descend back to the ground. This then transitions to grounded as soon as the player's feet touch back to the ground. There's also significant differences in the animation between a standing or neutral jump and a walking or running jump. Throwing out an attack at different phases of the jump animation will yield significantly different results. During the jump phase, up until the apex of a jump, if an attack is made, the character will have little to no tracking during the jump phase, good tracking into landing, and no tracking at all once they're grounded. Basically meaning that it's very difficult to manually aim your character any further if you initiate the attack animation during this phase of the jump. Every weapon has a different degree of tracking in these jumps, but as an example, heavy thrusting swords can only rotate about 90 degrees if the attack is made during the jump phase of the animation. This is pretty much the same whether the user is using a neutral jump or a running jump, but they'll have a little better tracking in the jump phase of an animation with a neutral jump. If they delay their attack to the transition into a landing phase or grounded phase, then they'll have limited tracking during the remainder of their landing phase with exceptional tracking once they're grounded. In-game, this translates to having nearly 360 degrees of perfect tracking if they delay their attack to the landing phase. This is true whether the attacker uses a neutral jump or a running jump. Some weapons are a little weird and have either significantly less tracking than others or significantly more, most notably being curved greatswords, which have perfect tracking throughout the entire animation of their JR2, regardless of how the user times the attack. So, jump attacks have three phases and two classes of animations, but how is any of this relevant? Sometimes, when you're in the middle of a jump attack and someone lands a hit on you, say with like a Shamshir R1, the hit connects, and yet you don't get staggered, and your attack lands uninterrupted. Why? Some jump attacks, during very specific phases of these animations, get super armor. Super armor is notably only seen in a very few niche situations, the most notable being applied to scythes, which have super armor on all of their attacks instead of hyper armor that most large weapons get. Super armor is different from hyper armor as it ignores hit stun from certain weapons altogether, regardless of your passive poise, whereas hyper armor is calculated based on the amount of passive poise that your character naturally has. Attacks deal different levels of hit stun. Small weapons like rapiers and daggers deal a level 8 hit stun. Straight swords, hammers, and heavy thrusting swords deal a level 1 hit stun. Medium weapons like great swords, halberds, and scythes deal a level 2 hit stun, and colossal weapons deal a level 3 hit stun. 
The super armor applied to jump attacks, scythes, and raptor claw charged R2s allow you to ignore a level 8 and level 1 hit stun. Scythe R2s have super armor that also allows you to ignore a level 2 hit stun, and Ashes of War like Endure and Oath of Vengeance allow you to ignore all levels of hit stun. But not all weapons get super armor on their jump attacks, and most require a specific type of jump. Every weapon, except for heavy thrusting swords and regular thrusting swords, have super armor on their one-handed and two-handed jump attacks if the player enters the jump from walking or sprinting. Every power stance moveset gets super armor on their jump attacks from walking or sprinting, except for power stance great axes, great hammers, great spears, thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, scythes, halberds, and curved great swords. But Power Stance Claws and Katanas are the only weapons in the game that get super armor on their standing jump attack. This makes both of these weapons particularly lethal when used with the Ash of War Raptors of the Mist, which provides the user with iframes to avoid a hit and then gives the user immediate access to their neutral jump attack for super armor, preventing them from being staggered out of the air. The super armor frames are only active during the jumping and landing phases, but they expire as soon as the player's feet touch the ground. So delaying the jump attack to landing phase is likely to result in your character losing the super armor frames before the attack animation can complete. In general, the property of super armor on jump attacks makes them easily spammable and very, very difficult to punish, making it a great tool to use against more passive players so long as you can get in close enough to either land the hit or force them to roll. But if they either have access to a weapon with a level 2 stun or a level 3 stun, then it's not going to do you as much good. But from time to time, you'll experience a situation where a player hits you while you're mid-jump, but for some reason, you aren't stunned, even if you're using a setup that doesn't get super armor. The reason for this is something called an IPE, or Infinite Poise Event. An IPE occurs during the transition of states. One of the more well-known cases of Infinite Poise Events is a bug that people have come to know as Perfect Blocks which occur as a player transitions into or out of blocking, while also transitioning from sprinting to walking or from walking to sprinting. The overlap of these two transitions causes the character to be unable to process an instance of hit stun, so they'll be able to ignore the attack. This can happen just as the player transitions to landing phase, if the player rotates 90 degrees with an attack animation as they transition from jumping to landing. They will then perform an IPE and ignore any hits done for the duration of about one frame. IPEs ignore all forms of hits done, whether it's from a small weapon or a colossal, and these are most certainly a bug, but aside from executing a perfect block which can be done on reaction to an opponent's attack, most IPEs are unreliable to try and reproduce intentionally. But unlike IPEs, using the super armor provided during specific jump attacks is always reliable, up until the point that the opponent pulls out a really big sword and tells you to sit the fuck down. So from this point in the video will be a showcase where I demonstrate how you can utilize super armor provided by certain jump attacks in order to improve your ability to play more aggressively. I also want to say a big thank you to the people in the ERPVP Discord for helping me with all my questions, and to Saucy for helping me out with testing. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into the fights. During these fights, I'm actively looking to try and force trades with my opponents by abusing the super armor frames of jump attacks, which really isn't my preferred playstyle. I'm not a huge fan of hyper armor or super armor in general, but it's a mechanic that's necessary to understand. I start out the fight by jumping over their crouch L1 and catch them with my own. We take a trade and I disengage before jumping back in, getting my super armor to prevent me from getting stunned by their R1. They land a huge hit, but I'm able to time a good roll and get right back in with another JL1. I work my way back in looking for an opening, but the poison finishes them off, finishing the fight. Next up, we have a fight against Wezus, a good friend of mine and a tournament player. The fight starts off as they miss their jump, but I'm late to punish. I try and jump in as well, but they do a good job at avoiding it. Our two brain cells seem to get the same idea, and we both aided running R2, and I back off, fearing the potential parry. Again, our two brain cells become one, and we both go in for a jump, but only mine connects. They avoid the follow-up, coming back in looking for an R1. I throw out a backwards jump, get my super armor, and land the hit to punish. They then respond by perfect blocking my follow-up and landing a couple of high damaging hits before I can get out. 
So in this fight alone, we've already seen an instance of intentional use of super armor and intentional use of an IBE. Wezus is very good at landing perfect blocks, so if you want to see a good demonstration of that tech, go check out his channel over on YouTube. It's really anyone's game at this point, and whoever manages to land a hit takes the win. I managed to grab a JR1, and follow it up with a Crouch R1 to finish the fight. My next opponent comes in with Power Stance Spears, and the fight kicks off as we feel each other out, and I land a big JL1 on their whiff. They roll out, but I keep up the pressure and super armor through their attack. I don't generally like posting clips of fighting newer players, but it's just a clean example of super armor doing its work, so I had to keep it. But in the next fight we have a much more experienced player, and the fight starts out as I fail to properly space their backswing and we eat a trade, but I'm able to tank their hit since I have 89 poise. I land a running L1 and a follow up with an R1 to keep priority. They mash out a hit stun and I'm not able to stop them so I disengage and reset. This guy plays really well so I don't want to feed him any free hits, but as long as I can force him to roll with the jump attack then it's always safe for me to go for. He rolls the hit successfully, but since we force the roll he's unable to punish it. I whiff a hit from Kilo, no real idea what I was thinking, and I eat a bunch of damage for it. But I go back in and land a roll catch, but I'm not able to land any follow-ups as he's able to roll them all perfectly. He comes back in with an R1, which I'm able to outspace and punish and end the fight. As a reminder, HTS is one of the few weapons that doesn't get access to super armor on any of their attacks, so you have to be much more strategic with your jumps in order to avoid hits altogether. Despite the lack of super armor, HTS is heavily reliant on jump attacks, since its rolling and standing attacks are utter dog shit. Because of this, HTS is very susceptible to getting an IPE during that jump. I jump past their head and IPE the rapier, space out as they roll, and come back in with a running R2, forcing another roll. I jump over their running R2, and finish the fight with a delayed jump attack. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video, Raptors of the Mist is particularly strong with Power Stance Katanas and Claws, since they get super armor on their neutral jump attack. There really isn't any counterplay to it other than to anticipate the jump attack and roll out before it can land, or try and outspace it with a halberd, but everything else is either too slow or doesn't do a high enough hit stun to be able to stop it. So my opponent jumps in, I iframe through their R1 and win the trade, landing a big JL1. I outspace their jump and land a hit, try and outspace the sword dance, but I'm just out of range, but I chase them down. Raptors through their running attack and finish the fight. I don't think this really even needs to be argued, but in case you were wondering, there's a reason why this Ash is banned in tournaments, and this is only half of the reason. Moving on, my opponent is using Halshear, a setup that my friend Ended the Lion has covered pretty well in a video on his channel. But the fight starts out as I land a backwards jump over their head and a follow up with the backswing preventing their mash. I empty jump toward them and grab a roll catch, another backswing, and reset to neutral. I don't think that two handing the shear was the right play here since it's a lot easier for me to outspace and it doesn't have the same keep out pressure as their initial setup. At this point, they're at very low health, so I fish for a couple of crouch pokes and finish the fight. What Super Armor does provide you is it provides you a safety net to protect you from getting stunned by specific attacks while the effect is active. Whether you're using it or trying to avoid getting nuked by jump attacks, it's important to understand how it works. Otherwise, you'll just have chunks of your health bar taken away for no good reason. But that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.